Good morning, and welcome to my still chilly office. Let's talk about hill shades. So the way a hill shade generally works is, let's say you've got a mountain, and this is the foot of the mountain. And here, let's say it's a like a volcano, because it's better to illustrate. And here's the cone of this volcanic mountain. And you have to define where your fake sun is going to sit. So um, a singular, simple hillshade doesn't have like a light source like this that comes in and kind of plays off the surfaces and bounces around. Really, it's more like a wall of light coming from any direction. And typically, we say it comes from the northwest direction, so our brains don't inadvertently flip extruded things into, you know, underground things. Um, and so here's a wall of light and we'll say it's coming in like this. The default I think is 315 degrees. That's the aspect. But I've read research that says 320 is better. So here's our fake light source. Everything's fake. It's digital, right? And we've got an elevation model representing this mountain. And the result of this would be shaded areas where the light can't reach. So virtually all of the back end of the mountain is shaded. And you can see these kind of erosional rivulets as a result, you know, maybe a little bit like this. And then the caldera would be shaded on this side. Okay, singular, simple, traditional hill shading. Let's see how this looks digitally. Here is a NASA SRTM digital elevation model of the area around Hood River and the Columbia River Gorge. Mount Hood, actually, Hood River is a town over here. So let's do a traditional hill shade of this area. So I'll open up the raster functions, I'll choose hill shade. I'll define my input and I'll just say zero degrees or same as 360 degrees. So the imaginary light source is going to be coming down straight from the top, straight down. And there's our result. That's pretty cool. Now, definitely one of the drawbacks about a traditional single light source hillshade like this is you lose out on all the topographic information where it's just washed out in light. It's awash with light and deprived of topographic detail. So what's a cartographer to do? You just have more than one source of light. So in our even more simplified mountain, you can define a light source here. You can define a light source here. Here, 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 here. And each one of those will reveal some topographic nuance. Let's see what that looks like. So first I'll turn off this input and I'll come here and I'll change this color scheme so that it's just black to semi-transparent black. So 100% transparent black. And then this shaded area, since I'll be stacking multiple versions of this, I'll make it quite semi-transparent. I'll say 75% transparent which means it's only 25% opaque, and then it transitions into fully transparent here. And it looks like this. And then we just run the same thing for as many hill or as many sun um, source inputs as we like. I'm going to do eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like the sides of a stop sign. Let's do this. And there it is, a multi-directional hill shade, except every direction is weighted equally. 
effectively we're just looking at a slope map. Now I'll show you what I mean. So if we bring back these raster functions and choose slope instead of hillshade, give it our digital elevation model input and let it go. This is a visualization of slope. Let's just reverse this so that flat areas are light and steep areas are black. Uh, this is a slope map and it looks an awful lot like all of our accumulated hill shades. Kind of interesting, right? That's because that's pretty much all it is. But if you have all these light sources and they're all the same strength, then you get something that's visually kind of weird looking and not very telling topographically. So you have to start playing favorites. You have to weight one of these more strongly than the other so you still see some geographic nuance and your brain understands what's going on. Or you can just you know, erase a couple of these. And that loss actually lets your brain interpret better visually what the topography is like. Let's see what that looks like. If I were to delete a couple of these, so play favorites and remove the hill shade from a couple of angles, the result is our brains can process more of the three-dimensionality of this scene. So multi-directional hill shade is kind of interesting in that it helps us bring out the topographic nuance of a place but we can still never go fully multi-directional. We have to play some favorites so that there's a little bit of variability in the scene so our brains can take hold of it and understand the topographic nature of the input data.